Hello and welcome. This is a talk about uh, Wim and I'm super excited to be here and I'm very happy that we see each other in person. Um, and I want to share today some of my experience that I uh, have been taking with Wim, in my journey with Wim. Uh, first of all, some quotes to my presentation setup on the right side. I have my, my slides prepared on the left side. I have a terminal open um, where I will um, show you things directly in Vim, show some examples. And additionally, from time to time, I will also switch to the slides because the slides are, are written in, in some markdown. They are um, built directly. And when I'm changing something in the slides, it may take a few seconds until you see it on the, on the right side. A short overview for the for the talk. Um, what we are going to look at is Wim. Wim is a powerful text editor. I guess most of you have seen it sometime, have used it sometime. Um, what's special about it is that you can edit text efficiently. So you can train yourself and learn that you can make changes without thinking about them. And another thing that is really awesome with Wim is that you can automate things. You can uh, make repetitions very straightforwardly, also again without thinking about it. And this is what I want to show you today. My personal background with him, basically um, before Wim, I was working with Kate. If you don't know Kate, Kate is the KDE Advanced Text Editor. And the Advanced stands for that it has code highlighting. That's basically the, the only feature it got. And I was working with it with because I, I was mostly working in, in Shell and, and needed something minimalistic. And uh, I had a, a bet with some working colleague and I lost the bet, so I had to switch to Wim, which was really not so much fun at the beginning. Um, but uh, it really turned out great for me because I, I, I'm stuck with it now, I guess, like for 15 years. Um, before we dive into Wim, I want to uh, make, I want to uh, ask you to imagine that uh, this scenario where we, th that we are in our work workshop, we are want to make some, some woodworking, we want to, to cut some wood into some pieces. Uh, for this scenario, for sure, um, we will drive to some tool shop and we will buy a, a brand new uh, saw and then go back to our workshop. And the first thing that we will do is probably not take the saw and cut it into pieces, but before we will take the saw, put it away, and then we will do some measuring, and we will um, prepare the wood um, that we can uh, get the most exact result that we want to achieve. As we are done with the measuring, we will go back, take our saw again, and then we will cut away. And basically, this is very similar how you work with Wim. Wim is a text editor that um, does not that, that does utilize the keyboard in, in, in much more ways. It uh, uses modes, and you constantly switch between these modes. Um, the most simple to to understand is the insert mode. This is like with any other text editor. You just everything that you type on your keyboard will appear on the screen. That's it. That's the insert mode. But beyond, um, we have, for example, the normal mode, which, as the name suggests, is the default mode of Wim. Uh, when we are in the normal mode, then the, the keys on the keyboard get some different meaning. So when you type along, it does not appear on the screen, but it does something. And we use it to manage text, and we use it to navigate around. Another mode that we will uh, have a look into is the command mode. Uh, which is basically things that you do not do, do, not do um, that much. So, for example, save the file. You can do it with shortcuts or something. That is fine, but 
um, you probably don't want to have it in normal mode. So you switch the context and then you can save a file, um, exit the, the program or uh, apply some search and replace. There are some other modes, uh, but the insert normal and command mode that are probably uh, most used. Um, uh, one thing we will also see is the visual mode, which is basically uh, just marking some text or highlighting some text. So let's have a direct look. I start the Vim. I use some argument minus minus clean. I hope you can see it, otherwise I can enlarge it one time. Does it work for you? Or is that better? Okay. Um, so I add the argument minus minus clean because I have some configurations for Vim, but uh, with minus clean it will uh, don't use any of my configurations. So it's clean as you use it when you install it on your uh, operating system of choice. And okay, let's edit some file test text. And when I start Vim, I'm in normal mode. And this is probably most of uh, one of the most confusing things for people starting with um, Vim because now if I type something, nothing appears on the screen. Uh, until I press I, and I is the command that I switch into insert mode. When I press I, then on the um, bottom right, bottom left side, you see um, you see uh, insert as a, as a hint that you're in insert mode. And if I type now along, everything appears on the screen until I press escape. And when I'm in escape, the insert uh, disappears and I'm in normal mode again. From here, I can now manage the text, move, move along in my file, uh, or for example, I can save it, which I do with double point. Then I'm in command mode. And the command mode, uh, again, on the bottom left, you see double point, and now I can type along some command. So let's, for example, type right. You can also just write W. Uh, and when I press enter, then it tells me test.txt has been written. It tells me even how many bytes it used. So, now uh, as I, I entered my command, it switched automatically back into normal mode, and from normal mode, um, we will show we will switch to another uh, mode. This is the visual mode. So press V, and from here I can move along and um, visualize some part of my text and uh, edit it later. If I press Escape again, I'm in normal mode. Um, funny thing here is that um, it tends to, to be quite popular that if you start Vim and you have no idea what, what's going on, uh, you even cannot quit it. And so there's an old saying that if you don't know anything about modes, then Vim is basically just a, a password generator. So for example, if I type, if I would go here and... Mm, and an empty file, and I would start typing like, um, why is nothing appearing on the screen? Then it starts to, to um, that this starts with the S, because when I type why is nothing, then you see that the I is the first command that switches into insert mode, and from there people are, are usually stuck, because then um, probably some people will try uh, control C. Control C is the same, has the same effect than pressing escape and you switch back to normal mode and from there you're stuck again. Maybe someone will type exit. With exit you end up that um, E does something, X um, removes some character. I will switch again back to insert mode. I type a T and you see it, it, it starts to get um, cluttery and, and uh, and messing my file up. Um, the proper way to, to quit is in command mode. So if we are in normal mode, we press double point. We can, uh, the shortcut is Q, you can type quit. If I try to quit, it will tell me that, um, like in, like it's very common in, in editors that they tell you, 
uh, there are unsafe changes, so I cannot quit as well. So the thing is, you have to uh, you have to type uh, quit and an exclamation mark. Um, to remember the, the actions you can do in, in normal mode, uh, Wim has some kind of strategy. It uses mnemonics, which is basically um, in German uh, Gedächtnisstütze or Eselsbrücke. So um, the most keys will, will have some idea behind that you can easily think of. For example, um, we want to insert some text, so we use an I. We want to visualize some text, so we use um, um, V. Uh, if we want to move around, I will switch to the slides. If I want to move around, for example, I'm, I'm here at this line with, with uh, we want to visualize and I press W, then it, the cursor jumps one word. I can press it again. Here you'll see there's some special characters, so Wim does not recognize it as a complete word, but will split it up. Just press more and you jump always uh, one, one word uh, far further. Beyond this, there are many more of these navigational commands. So um, as we have moved one word, we can also move to the end of the word, which makes a only a small difference because if I move one word, I press W now and I, I jump to the next word. Again, if I press to the end of a word, I'm always jumping just to the last uh, character of a word. If I press a B, I move back a word. So I can now um, quite magically move uh, beyond words if I remember those. Um, um, just to show you an additional, quite powerful example, we can also jump in a line to some character. This is with find, so find some character in the current line. And this uh, happens by pressing um, F, and with F, any character that we want. So this uh, goes out of, of the normal mode, and we can choose any character that we want to jump to. Uh, for example, let's jump to the E here, F, I, and I'm uh, in, mi in the middle of our, of our text. Or let's, let's choose T. Find T, then I'm, I'm here, I can press again, find T, jump to the next T, find T to the next T. Unfortunately, not every command on the keyboard can have some mnemonic, um, but uh, still the, the, the most useful ones will have some, and some other are pretty easy to, re to remember. For example, um, we can press X to cross out or delete some character under the cursor. Pretty easy to remember. X just deletes what is below the cursor. Um, uh, we can uh, use zero, uh, the uh, carrot, and the dollar symbol to, to jump quickly in between a line. Uh, just to get sure, the difference between beginning and the start of text is if, if the, the, the line is indented, then I can choose with zero, I jump to the beginning of a line with caret, it is the beginning of text, and with dollar, I jump to the, to the end of the text. Um, one additional thing with Wim is that you want to try to, to use your keyboard only and, and not switch to the mouse just to highlight something or, or to move things around. And for that reason, uh, you even want to keep your, your, your um, keys at always at your, so your actions always at your fingertips and even don't uh, jump to the, to the arrow keys to move around. For that reason, uh, Wim uses H, J, K and L to move around. So with H, I move forward, with J, I move down, K up, and L to the, I move the cursor to the right side. Uh, this is optional for sure. You can also use the arrow keys to work the same ways, um, but after some time, you get really used to it. And, and you will see a lot of other Unix tools use, it, use this um, approach as well. So 
is a, a good thing to do. Um, for me, um, I had a, a working colleague, which I was working in a bear programming session for a while, and, and he was really crazy about how I use Wim, and, and he, ha he had never seen it before, and he, he, he really went fancy, and, and most of the time we were just talking, how did I date this change, and, and he wanted to know such a, so much things. And then the next day when I, when I came to work, I visited him as his working place, and I saw this on his keyboard, and I knew he, he started to learn Wim. So now that we've, we've learned to navigate around, um, we see that the first power that, that we have achieved with this, we can combine commands. So now with, um, let's jump here. Okay, um, I can now uh, combine D, which is delete, with our word movement. So if I, if I, I simply delete the word if I type DW. Uh, for sure, I can also do it somewhere else. And the best thing is that I, I can use it with any movement. So for example, I can delete just to the end of a word, which in, in this case for sure leaves us with two spaces because I just cut it at, as the, at the E of sum. Uh, another cool thing, I can delete backwards. So you see there's not much difference, but uh, as you go along, you get really, really used to these things, and you think about, oh, I, I, I don't want this word that I have before where I'm at at the moment, and you just type db because you don't think about it. Um, additionally, you can you can go much much further with your with your combinant. Um, here, I brought up some example, and with the with the things we learned so far, we can already um, read the, the command um, that, is, that is executed up there. Because zero goes to the beginning of a line, which is always a, a good thing if you want to edit this slide from scratch. Then we're going to delete it until we find a character A. So it's, if, if you get a bit used to it, it's pretty easy to read and understand um, what is meant by the keystroke you're taking in normal mode. So let's execute it um, with, this, with this example sentence uh, down there, and we press zero. Okay, let's, let's go somewhere in between that. We see that we jump to the beginning. So with zero, we jump to the beginning of a line. We ensure that we start there. We delete until we find an A, and it deletes the, the characters here. Um, uh, you can compare these keystrokes because basically what we want to achieve is um, using less keystrokes to achieve something, to achieve our goal. And for that, um, some users, some Vim users talk about the golf score because in, in, in the sport golf, you try to have as less um, hits to um, finish a track as possible. And this is basically the same thing. Um, and for this example, for sure, we have a golf score of four because we needed four um, keystrokes. There I there's even quite some community that tries to uh, share um, e challenges where you have some starting scenario and where you want to edit your text and with some outcome. And people try to find uh, the lowest score possible using Vim with no configuration. This is quite, quite some fun, as, uh, a screenshot of um, vimgolf.com where you can see such, such examples. Um, the thing is, if you, if you look at these examples, this is not efficient. This is just, they, they want to have the lowest score, but it does not mean that it's the most easy. Mo a lot of um, examples there will be some regular expressions in search and replace. So this is probably not something you do without thinking. Um, now we have already seen that we can combine words. Uh, we have seen DEW, which deletes a word. We have seen DE, which deletes until the end of a word. We have seen DB, which deletes back one word. DF, delete, find, until you find some specific character. Then something that is 
super useful is um, D$, dollar because most of the time when you're typing something and you, you write your text and you figure out, okay, this uh, the sentence starts good, but it ends terrible, you want to delete something and, and just um, just uh, adapt it to, to, to something else. And uh, D double, um, D dollar is, you will use it so many times that it even has a shorthand. It, uh, it, it is uh, uppercase D, then you delete the line until the end of the line. For example, if I'm here in, the, in this example and I press D, then it removes the rest of the line, which is the same if D dollar that I typed now um, does the same. Um, very similar. Uh, DD deletes one line. It's DD, not DL, because uh, DL would be D, D and move the cursor one to the right. But uh, DD is, is a good thing because you're already on the D with your finger and pressing it again it costs not that much time. Uh, the difference between uh, uppercase D and DD is that if you are in the, in the middle of some line and I press DD, then I remove that line completely. So, another uh, command that we can combine is C. Um, C is pretty similar to, um, to delete. Uh, the difference is if, if, you, if you want to change some word uh, or think of replace some word, you probably um, want to enter some text, which in if you delete it, it would be delete word and then enter insert mode. And uh, change word is the same than the, than the command uh, above, but it saves you one keystroke. So you see, it's, it's all, all, all things in Vims are just to get less um, typing. And this works really great if you get used to it. So, so change word, I, I just change the uh, delete here and, and it enters the insert mode and I can type along. Uh, same thing, we can combine it, we can say change, uh, change until the end of a word, change back a word, change until you find some character, change dollar, here the same uh, principle, it has a shorthand, the shorthand is just the uppercase version of it, and we can also change a whole line if we are somewhere in the middle with uh, pressing CC. Sometimes you yeah, yeah, may not um, you may not be sure uh, what what a command will actually do, and instead of trying it out, it is a good thing to just um, use the visual mode. So in visual mode, before the change gets applied, you just see what what's going to be affected. So for example, uh, we have here we can read it again. Um, find until the character W then switch to visual mode with V, then we have three times move to the end of a word, then we have the delete command, and afterwards we still have some character left that we want to get rid of, and that is uh, that we, we remove this with uh, pressing X. So um, in, in our example sentence, we have four times the word word, which we want to get rid of. So um, we find until the word, then our cursor is at the word, we change to visual mode, and 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 then we press D, now it gets removed, and we see, okay, we're back in normal mode, um, but we, s we still have some character left. Most easy thing to do is just pressing X, and we're fine. The real power with, with this handling and, and actions is that Wim has uh, some techniques to, to repeat stuff and to play it again. And any action that we have taken so far, we can um, use the dot command. Um, and this dot command, the only thing that it do is, is the last action that we did, it, it will do again. Most easy to understand if we do some example. Um, 
we have here one, two, two, four, five. We want to have one, two, three, four, five. What we're going to do is we go into the into the line, then we press WW, which goes along two words. Then we change until the end of a word. We type in three. We press escape. Now we're back in the in the um, in the normal mode. Now we do move down two lines with pressing J, J, J. Now we see, okay, we want to change the two. For that reason, we um, press B to go the um, back one word. And now I simply press the dot, and the dot um, repeats my action. So basically, my action that Wim now remembers is that I changed one word to, um, to three. So I basically can go to any word now and replace it with three with just typing the dot. Um, well, with, with the dot command, we can now super fast do search and replace. Basically, Vim also has search and replace, and I know this um, may not uh, come into the mind to, to use manual searching and replacing, but for example, if you want to only change specific um, occurrences, of the search result that you have, then it's pretty pretty cool because you just search for something. Let's go here and, and search for three. And then I can move to the next. Um, so um, slash uh, brings me into search mode and where I type along. I press enter and then I, I, I find some word. This is what I've done here. The, the search results are highlighted. And now I can ch change a word, for example, I can change three to just three. And then I can jump to the next found one and I can just press uh, dot again and it, it will do the job for me. And with replacing just one word, this might not be look so much powerful, but you can, you can do much more actions. You can, for example, if you have a scenario where you have on the occurrence of one word, delete the next three words, this is a pretty powerful thing um, at hand because you don't have to think a lot. I know there, there, there are a lot of magic happening in search and replace tools where you can enter regular expressions and stuff, but you don't have to think about any regular expression. You just have to, to, to do it once and then you can go along and for the rest of the file or multiple files you check can repeat uh, your actions. Um, what we also can do is repeat our search so that the find in line, not the search. Um, find in line repeat, repeat is the um, uh, semicolon. So just for this example, I want to, I see that I have written um, uh, and wrong. I have two A's there and I want to remove it. Uh, first thing that will come into my mind, okay, jump to the A. If I press F A, I find character A, then I'm at around because I've missed that there is an A already somewhere in the in the line. And, and, and instead of just repeating my find command, I can quickly just go with pressing a semicolon. I'm here and I can remove the addition, the doubled A. Um, and for automation, some other example or some other technique that you can do for sure, uh, it has, um, Vim has also some way to record your actions. So you, this is really powerful because uh, you, you, you pretty soon get um, your, what your result will be if you change one line. Um, you can start a recording pressing Q and then some character, so it, the character afterwards is the kind of register where your action gets stored. It's quite, quite uh, straightforward if you just press QQ and you have the Q register to store it there. And to repeat your automation, so you play the actions you have just taken, uh, you press um, the add Q command. We can probably, if there's some time left, we can see some example as well. Um, so, short notes to the to the Vim automation. 
the automation is super super powerful and it for example if if you search and replace and this is not enough for the for the challenge you have to take or for the task at hand then um vim will probably be the the, the right choice to to do it the thing is just if you do it once that's super that's awesome if you have to do it regularly then it you you're way faster if you if you use some scripting some programming language whatever for sure because you will retype again and Vim is not just meant that you can quickly do one job. Um, another hint that I that I already um, told in, in some ways uh, if you're unsure about what a, what an action will do I just use uh, visual that is super helpful for example um, uh, I can change the inner of a paragraph which Sometimes a writing text might not might not be clear what what is meant by the paragraph, uh, but if I visualize the inner paragraph, then I see exactly okay these are the two lines here, and I can change it by pressing C. So I have one one keystroke more, but I will see exactly what I'm going to do. Especially if you then see you, you have something edited that you don't, uh, you have something visualized that you don't want to edit, you can just move around with the, with the navigation modes and uh, change it then. Uh, another hint is Vim has many, 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 many uh, different actions that you can take and learning them step by step uh, really helps to improve your, your navigation and, and to save some shortcuts. For example, uh, switching to insert mode, we have already seen. If you delete some word it's some and, and you want to change it, then it has a shorthand, the C command, that you change it directly and you delete something and enter the insert mode. Uh, same approach is, is here. We have, for example, if we are somewhere and we press I, then I switches into the insert mode and it does this by uh, moving uh, in front of our cursor. But what if we want to start writing below, behind our cursor, so on the next thing, um, which is done by the A. And you can think of it by a bend. This is a, a, the mnemonic to remember it. So if I'm an O and I press A, then I'm, I'm behind. If I'm at O and I press E, then I'm before the, the O. It's just one, it, it already saves you one keystroke. The thing is, now that I, I know uh, a, I and A, so insert and the bend, and I now figure out that uh, uppercase I has also a shorthand to go to the beginning of a line and start a long typing. So it's the same than pressing zero and I. I can press also with one, with one short code. Uh, same is for A, for sure. A will go to the end of a line and I can write along at the end of a line. Um, additionally, something that happens quite often is you want to insert a new line, so you can just do this with O, which is basically the same, then append, enter, and type along, but it already saves you again one command. Um, and probably what you already would expect, if I press the uppercase O, it creates a new line, but before the current line. And um, um, this, this is just um, what we've seen so far is mostly the magic that you can do in the normal mode. There's also tons of commands you can, you can use in, in the command mode, which is really, really helpful, especially if you're very used to, to work in shell, you will see that you can combine it with any tools uh, at hand. And for sure, um, um, Vim is, highly configurable you can use you can find plugins for everything uh, um, some examples that i use a lot is uh, fuzzy finding to open files so if i want to find some file i can just type parts of it and i uh, and i can open it directly um, file browsers inbuilt file browsers as plugins or for sure if you're if you're a software developer there are a lot of um, test suits that you can run directly, uh, code formatting and syntax analyzers and so on. So, great to check out. 
Okay, now that there's some time left, I want to show you some real world examples that I've prepared. So, Well, something that, that happens to me quite often is, um, for example, if you have some markdown file or some other kind of text file and you have some ordered list and the only thing that you want to do is to, to change it to some uh, unordered list. So to replace the, the uh, um, increasing numbers with minus. Um, first thing that will come to my mind here is, okay, I can record a macro. I can record um, some action and then replay it for the rest of the lines. In this example, I see every line um, has a dot until the dot I want to change something. So I will probably go with, um, with find the character dot. And um, what I would suggest here is, for example, first of all, I will press QQ, which will um, start um, recording. Then I will change until you find the character dot. And then I will then it will get removed and I'm in insert mode. So I will press space and minus and escape. Then um, so let's type escape. Then I then I will be in normal mode again, but I'm still in the line that I have just edited. So if I want to replay my commands, I, I want to go to the next line so I can immediately repeat them. So I will go to the next line. And from the next line, I will just um, stop the recording. So let's execute this. So QQ, and it shows me recording into register Q. Change find dot, space minus, escape, JQ. Okay, what I missed is to go to the beginning of the line, so I messed my recording up. But I think you get the idea. So what I also, uh, let's make it nicely. So again, QQ, change find dot, minus, go to the next line. Okay, and now I missed to, to get the space, but it, Let's ignore it. I press Q, so I've recorded it. I can replay it. I can now say I, I have 10 lines left, so I t press 10 times, play my recording, and I'm done with replacing my, my list. Um, uh, if you are get used to, to Vim, then you will say, oh, this is a quite high goal score for such an easy task. Um, what you can do is you can just go here and uh, the visual mode has besides that I can just press V and, and visualize some text. I can press the uppercase V, which the first modifier, then I, have, I can line-wise um, mark the text. And additionally, I can press Control V. And Control V, uh, you see a hint in the, in the bottom left, switches to visual block mode. In this block mode, I can move around and I can, I can um, make a block of text um, marked, and now I can change it directly, um, insert the minus, escape, and I'm done. So this is way quicker. For sure, I can also go um, 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 the way back. Uh, however, this is quite, quite tricky already, so I, I press again the visual um, control V, the visual uh, block mode, then I press C to insert something, I insert zero for all of them. Then I mark them again. And then I go and there's, um, Vim has some built-in increase so it can recognize some, some uh, numbers and you can press a command to increase or decrease it. Um, increase is control A. And I can say increase it um, uh, for every line, which is a modifier G and A and then I'm done. Okay, I see there's not the right um, intention. So I just go here and insert a, a space again with, with block mode. Um, 
Another example, um, so say you have received some um, some CSV data and you received it one time and you only have to do this job once and you know the application that you will um, that you will feed with, with your CSV data um, it has the wrong format for the date. Here's the German date format for for the people and we, we need the US format. So you want to, to change it easily. Um, one thing here already, I have opened 50,000 lines file and you can see it, it takes no, no second to jump around there to, to search something in there. Um, so if you have large files, this is uh, a great thing to do because it saves you so much time if you don't want to start programming something. Because if you have larger files, you probably will not import it in, in I don't know, some, some spreadsheet and, and start manipulating it. Because if it has like hundreds of megabytes, um, this probably won't work. Um, here we can use a macro again. And the thing is, the macro is not super fast, but, uh, but it works. So why not use it? it? So you just grab a cup of coffee until your, your task is done. Um, so here, let's start the macro. Uh, I'm at the beginning of a file, press cuckoo. Um, for this example, I will probably go to um, th three times, find the comma, then I'm here. Then I will insert the two minuses that we will use later. Then I find backwards, which is the uppercase F, also easy to, to remember uppercase F, delete backwards. Um, let's find the first minus and paste what we just deleted afterwards. Then again, let's two times find backwards the dot. Then I delete back again. Then let's find the second minus. Oh, this was wrong. I guess I messed this up. Okay, so you see, it can be useful, but can also take some time until you get the right macro that you want. I, I want one try again. Um, I'm at the beginning of a line, I jump to the... Oh. I three times find minus, then insert, escape, find backwards the dot, Delete back, find minus, then two times find backwards the dot, delete backwards. So now I do it uh, in, in a different way. I find the next comma and I paste it backwards. And then I find backwards the comma, go once right, two times uh, press X to delete it, escape go to the beginning of a line, go to the next line, and I stop the recording because I don't want to mess anything up. And I can replay it now. And for this, I have 50,000 lines, so I, I type 50,000. And I just repeat it, and it will, it will take some time, but after some time, it will probably be finished. I hope it will finish in two minutes. <laughs> um, and then, then uh, let's finish with the last two slides. Um, if you got interested and you want to, so it started, and this is basically just that the screen is, is loading. So it's already done, but the output still has to, to go there. But it's, you see, 50,000 lines, and you, can, you even cannot drink one coffee. So um, if you got interested, if you want to start Wim, or if you need some, if you already have worked with it and you forgot everything about it, Wim ships with Wim Tutor. It's just a command that you can, if you have installed Wim, you can also um, run this command. And this is a, a, a tutor that that goes through the um, through the most basic. Uh, I would suggest to you find someone who, who already uses Wim. This is the most help. This helped me the most. That was basically the reason why I, I had sticked to Wim. Um, 
My Vim configuration is at GitHub, and as a last note, my this presentation is also at GitHub. So everything I also summarized all keys on all actions that I used. So if you want to to look them up again, also the, the slides are up with all the examples, and I also the the examples are commented um, with everything you need to know. Thank you so much. Do we have some time for questions? No, I'm sorry. But I, I'm, I will be around if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Thank you.